Hi, Nick Dolman here. And in this week's video, we're going to talk about the difference between advanced forms and basic forms in Power Apps Portals. So if you've been working with Power Apps Portals for a while, you're probably wondering, what do you mean by advanced forms and what do you mean by basic forms? Well, recently there has been some terminology changes and these stem back to the terminology changes that happened to the Power Platform a few months back. Just a quick little refresher. If we remember, Common Data Service is now Dataverse. An entity is now called a table, a field is called a column, a record is called a row. And there's a few other terminology changes as well. So this past week, if you've been keeping an eye on Microsoft Docs, you'll notice that the Power Apps portals also have some new terminology changes coming. Specifically, entity permissions are now going to be known as table permissions. An entity name will now be known as a table name. And an entity list is now just going to be called a list. So far, so good. But there are now also a couple other changes that I think make a lot of sense. An entity form is now going to be called a basic form. That sounds a lot better than table form, don't you think? And then web forms are now going to be called advanced forms. So if you've been working with Power Apps portals for a while, you probably know the difference between entity forms and web forms. But if you're just learning Power Apps portals, these are one of the concepts that sometimes I find folks have a few little difficulties kind of wrapping their heads around. With these new naming conventions, I think it's really going to help. But let's review these two different form types in our Power Apps portals projects. So a question that comes up during training is, what's the difference between an entity form and a web form? Which now the question becomes, what's the difference between a basic form and an advanced form? I'm now in the portal studio. And here I'm going to go and create a brand new web page in which we're going to add a basic form. So very simple, create a page, choose a template, give it a name, also give it a partial URL. And now at this point, what I want to do is add a form component. I'm just going to clear out some of the stuff that's there, some of the default stuff, add a one column section. I'm going to choose that column and within it from my tool belt, I'm going to choose that form component. And this is a basic form in Power Apps Portals. I now need to give my form component a name. I'm going to call it Feedback Form and choose the particular Dataverse table, which I have set up earlier. I've called that Feedback. I know there's one part of the common data model, but I created my own. And then I'm going to choose the Web Feedback form that comes from a model-driven app. And what I can do is I can drill down into that directly to modify that form further. So here I'm in the Power Apps Maker portal where I can make adjustments to this model-driven form, which of course is going to be used as the basis of my Power Apps portal form. So back in the portal studio, we see we have different modes for our form, whether we're inserting, meaning creating records. We can also choose to edit or have read only. Now for the edit or read only, we will need to configure our portal to pass along the GUID to the particular page so it knows what Dataverse row to show. Of course, we can configure that in entity lists or lists components. On the success of submitting this form, we're showing different success messages or we could redirect to another page. And in the advanced settings, we can configure some default captures for either anonymous or authenticated users or both. And of course, enable table permissions. And here's an example of where we're beginning to see those name changes in our new portal, to portal tools. And just a quick demo of that basic form on a portal page, displaying that form and here the end user can go in and of course the lookup can show a modal. We can convert that to a drop down if we wanted. Going to give that a rating, fill out some extra details about our particular rating. And finally, we could also pick the date of this particular class. And again, that's just reflective of that model driven form that we set up earlier. And of course, we can submit that particular form, which is going to write that data back to Dataverse. And we're getting our submission completed successfully. Pretty straightforward stuff. And then by submitting that form, if we take a look at our model driven app, which is showing the data in Dataverse, of course, we see that feedback has been submitted to Dataverse. And our staff and internal users can view it there. And when we're back in the portal studio, let's just take a look at the source code. I'm going to click on the source code editor and highlight that we actually see the liquid tag that gets injected into the page copy for this particular web page. And that tag is, you know, telling it to display this particular entity form. 
Even though this is going to be renamed from Entity Form to Basic Form, there still is a lot of advanced functionality that you can do with Entity Forms or rather Basic Forms to really enhance the power of your Power Apps portals. So now that we understand the functionality of Basic Forms, let's take a look at Advanced Forms. Once again, I'm in the Portal Studio and I'm going to add a component. Now we don't have an advanced form component within the Portal Studio at this time. We just have the form which represents the basic form. So let's go through the steps to create an advanced form. Now before you create an advanced form, formerly known as a web form, I think it's a best practice that you plan out your steps because what an advanced form will allow you to do is go through a series of steps including conditional statements. But you really want to plan ahead because there's a lot of work that you need to do to make sure that it's connected correctly. So I like to usually set up either a whiteboard diagram or a Visio of our particular steps that we're going to go through. And here's just a quick high level Visio where we're going to create a registration record. We're going to ask the question whether we're going to register for yourself or someone else and then go through the various steps. So much like basic forms, advanced forms utilize the model driven forms and tabs of a particular table form. So here I'm in the regular maker portal and I'm going to modify the form for this particular table that we want to adapt into our advanced form. So what I've done here on the form is I've created each step as its own separate tab. Now, you don't have to do this, but it just really makes things a little bit easier and cleaner as you're planning out your particular advanced form for all the different steps, what data you're going to collect and what you're expecting your external users to be able to enter. And so by adding the different tabs, it's just going to give us a sense of how the flow will work for our particular advanced form. So as I mentioned earlier, we can't create advanced forms using the Portal Studio. We need to use the Portal Management app. At this time, when I go in, it doesn't yet say advanced forms, but I expect in a few weeks that it will. Mine currently still says web forms, but once we're here, this is where we're going to create our metadata for our advanced form. So let's take a walkthrough of a web form or a advanced form that I created earlier for the registration process. So when we create the record, we of course can give it any name that we want. We want to make it recognizable. We of course will need to choose the particular website. And then it does have a field here for start step. However, the start step we won't know when we create the record. We need to backfill this later once we create our web form steps, which I'll talk about momentarily. So this makes creating an advanced form a little bit tedious. We also are going to specify whether we want authentication required, meaning are we going to only allow portal users that have logged in, whether we start a new session or we continue off or they left off, or if we even are going to allow logged in users to create multiple sessions in our portal. And as we scroll down on our particular web form record, as we set it up, there's some other settings. We can turn on things like a progress indicator. We can add step titles. We can change the save changes warning and a bunch of different things. Let's take a look at the web form steps. So let's take a look at the web form steps. So the very first step we're going to do is create a new record of which we're going to start to collect some data. So we have some interesting things on this particular form that we need to fill out. We need to give our step a name and what I like to do is number my steps because this makes it easier to manage later on to kind of know the sequence of events as part of your flow. Again, we have to have a link to the parent web form because web form steps are children of a web form. And we also have to pick the particular type of web form. And we have some different options here. So we're going to look at the load form, but we also have condition, load tab, redirect, and load user control. So the load form means that we're going to load a model-driven form and where we're going to either edit, create, or read data. Since we're using the load form type, we're going to need to specify the particular data verse table for which we want to load the forms from. And now this is done with a dropdown and it's going to display from our metadata all the available dataverse tables, both ones part of the common data model, and any custom tables we may have added ourselves as part of our own solutions. We see here I have the next step defined, but as I'm creating the form steps, of course, we don't know the subsequent steps, so we do have to backtrack and fill those values in later. On the form definition tab, I choose whether it's an insert, edit, or read only step. 
And then the next thing we're going to need to choose the specific uh, form that's from our model driven app. And then we have the option to choose the tabs. And remember, I created uh, different tabs for each step to make it easier to manage. Taking a look at our next step, this is a condition step, which means we are able to choose a different path depending on conditions within our data. And this will allow us to kind of have branching situations in our process. Looking at our condition tab, we here we'll need to put in the schema name of a particular Dataverse column and put in the conditions. There is a helpful little guide that is part of this process where you can take a look and begin to build your conditions. Now, if that step fails, we have a step to go to, or if it's successful, we have a different step to go through. So you can see we have the two different branches off from this condition. So again, this is a another our next step, but this is again a load form. I look at the form definition. The difference here, it's the edit mode. Again, we choose a form. We have the option to choose a tab. But this time we need to choose a record source because we're actually editing an existing record from Dataverse. It's going to need to know the GUID of the particular record and also where it came from. And here we've just chosen the entity source step. And if this particular Dataverse row has a lookup to the contact, we can actually specify to associate the current portal user, which of course is a contact in Dataverse, and link it to this particular record in Dataverse as part of the web form process. So we have a few more steps. We're doing some more data entry. And here we have a read only, which is just showing displaying information. And it's a good way to end a particular web form process by providing a summary of the data that has been entered. And our final step is a redirect where we can go back to a specific page, whether to add more records or back to another page that's showing the data that we just recently entered. So there's a bunch of different options here we have to complete the web form process. Now, the next question I'm sure you have is since we can't add a advanced form to a particular web page, how do we get it to show up? Well, again, in our portal management app, we're going to go into the web page record. And here we actually have a lookup to the web form or rather what will be renamed advanced form. So that is one way how we can specify the particular form or advanced form to be on our particular web page. Now, even though we can't add that component using the tool belt and dragging that onto our canvas in our portal studio, what we can do is edit the source code. And this is an alternate way to add a web form to a page is simply just inject the liquid tag directly in the source code of that particular web page. So here on our Power Apps portal, let's take a look at how our advanced form looks. Looks very much like a regular form or a basic form, and I can begin to fill in the values. But instead of actually submitting the form, I'm just going to pick some different data here. We have a next, and we have a here that register for yourself, which is going to invoke our condition. So we decided not to register for ourselves. We're going to the next step where we're going to need to pick a particular student. We have some other options here that we can configure with the metadata. I'm going to just choose one of my students and I'm going to continue on with the process. Um, we have a very special thing here that we can decide how much we want to pay for the class. Uh, it's a little weird, but that is what it is for our demo. And then now we have that summary which lists all the information we entered as part of our form. And now we can submit it and that is advanced forms. So I've just shown you the very high level functionality of both basic forms and advanced forms, but of course there's a lot more functionality and a lot more configuration that can be done in your portal projects. But for now, let's just look at the basics. Uh, basic forms, we can add just uh, one row of data entry or editing or read only for Dataverse data. We can add that basic form to a page through the portal studio. We could also add it through a liquid tag or via a page reference on the web form record in the portal management app. And we could link it together to create a list or a link together for a process. So there's different things we can do to enhance basic forms. But when we get to that point, we might want to use advanced forms because advanced forms have that multi-step, multi-row data entry and editing. There's a lot we can do there. We can have the conditional branching, meaning we can go different areas. It is created in the portal management app, not within the studio. And then we can add to the page via that lookup reference or through a liquid tag.